Hello and welcome to today's session, Funding Your Graduate Studies. I am Ivy Mo from Graduate Division, and I will be moderating today's webinar. In today's session, you will hear Kristen Connors, Graduate Division's Fellowships, Scholarships, and Professional Development Coordinator. She will share general information about graduate student funding, where to look for opportunities, and how to plan for application process. We will take break, uh, breaks throughout the session to answer questions and have a breakout activity at the end. Kristen, please get us started. Sure, thank you so much. Um, so as Ivy mentioned, my name is Kristen Connors and I'm the uh, Fellowship Scholarships and Professional Development Coordinator in Graduate Division. I've been at UH Manoa for over four and a half years, but I've been in higher education for well over 23 years. And I have to say that working with graduate students and funding opportunities has been the most rewarding experience in my higher education career. So to get us started, I'd like to read a land acknowledgement. Uh, if you can kind of see in the background, it's a picture of McCarthy Mall, which is right outside of our building, Spalding Hall, where we're presenting from today in graduate division. So our land acknowledgement reads, Hawaii is an indigenous space whose original people are identified as Kanaka Maoli. The aina on which we gather at the University of Hawaii at Manoa is physically located in the Ahupua'a of Waikiki, in the Moku of Kona, on the Moku Puni of Oahu, in the Paiaina of Hawaii. Let us collectively engage in the Kuliana of becoming a Native Hawaiian place of learning grounded in Aloha Aina. Okay, so thank you for letting me share that. Um, today we're here to talk about money. <laughs> Um, and so thank you for joining me this afternoon to get us started just by a show of hands with the, with the zoom reactions. How many of you have applied for some type of financial support in the past, whether it's financial aid, scholarships, fellowship grants, anything, just go ahead and, and put up your hands or reaction. Okay, so a small amount of you, and that's that's totally fine. Um, okay, you can go ahead and, and lower your hands or, or close your reactions. Just by um, another show of hands, how many of you had help when you applied for that scholarship fellowship or, or financial aid? So it, maybe it was an office, maybe it was a parent, a family member. Okay, so an, an even smaller number of you had help with that. Okay, so that that can actually be a good good and bad thing so um the real shocker to some people when it comes to funding your graduate education and research is that the majority of the effort and the responsibility to find these opportunities and um and understand the process falls mainly on you as the student um, and that seems a little daunting uh, so that's why i'm gonna kind of share some tips and information with you today to help you have a better understanding of what's involved and, and how to prepare for the process. So I really just have two main goals for today's session. Uh, the first goal is for you to walk away knowing where you can find different types of funding opportunities. And the second goal is for you to understand how to prepare for a basic general funding application process. And in order to do that, we're gonna go over basic types of funding you might hear about, examples of financial support at UH Manoa, where you can find funding in general, um, so including external opportunities. We'll go over a general application timeline and again, how to prepare for that. I'll share some tips and advice. And then at the end, I have a student activity with breakout rooms. Um, please do not leave. That's actually the fun part of the session um, and, and actually the most valuable part you'll find uh, as I talk through this. Okay, um, so here on this slide, you'll see some general terms when we talk about funding opportunities. So again, just by a show of hands, how many of you are already familiar with this terminology? You know the difference between these types of funding. Okay, that's
that's good. Well, I, I'm glad it was a small amount um, because I'm going to give you an overview of what uh, these different terms mean and maybe some benefits or drawbacks for these different types of opportunities. So let's start off with graduate assistantships. So GA ships are jobs. They involve professional training. You might be hired to teach, to do lab work, some other type of professional work where you can build skills toward your career. And some departments might outright approach you to, you know, to be offered a graduate assistantship, whereas others, you have to take the initiative to search for and apply for a GA ship, just like you would for any other job. You will receive compensation um, in terms of a stipend. So that's income for the work that, that you're completing. And the um, level of stipend will vary by the appointment and the department that is hiring you. And that's because of the job requirements involved and because different departments have different um, funding available to them. In addition to the stipend, GA ships typically include other benefits such as tuition support, medical, dental insurance, et cetera. Uh, so GA ships are kind of what I call the gold star. That's, that's the one that you really, really want to try to find to support you throughout your graduate education. Okay, then we have scholarships. So a lot of people hear the term scholarships, um, but aren't aware that it's very restricted and how you can use them. Typically scholarships are only offered to support educational costs such as tuition, fees, books, et cetera. And oftentimes scholarships also are not in large amounts. So you'll see maybe a $500 scholarship, 1,000, 2,000, maybe a $5,000 scholarship. Now that's not to say that there aren't scholarships out there that aren't larger like a $10,000 scholarship or a fifteen thousand dollar scholarship, um, but typically scholarships are, are smaller amounts, whereas fellowships, fellowships tend to be larger pots of money to support you as a graduate student because the money is going to you as the student. Um, it's not going to your research project. It's not going necessarily um, to other costs. It's, it's mainly meant to support you as a person. Um, so there's typically a large stipend involved for fellowships, enough that would be equivalent to a graduate assistantship level stipend, um, your income for the year. And then depending on the purpose of the fellowship, they might include other funds such as research funding, travel expenses, um, maybe they'll cover professional development costs, uh, or even include some educational costs. And the great thing about fellowships is that some of them are renewable or they'll provide multi-year funding. So just like GA ships, fellowships are a great type of opportunity to go for. Okay, then there's the term awards, which can use really be used very generically. Uh, it's typically money that's given as a prize for excellent or significant research, uh, some type of accomplishment like outstanding teaching that you've, you've done in the past year. Um, but it can also be used interchangeably with any other vocabulary that you see on this slide. So sometimes you'll be talking to someone about a fellowship and then they'll refer to it as an award. Um, so just, you know, just be um, conscientious of how they're using the term award. Um, and then also awards tend to be smaller amounts again, uh, because this is given after work is completed. Okay, then there's grants. So this is a really common term that we hear um, in graduate education. Faculty will talk about grants, your department will talk about grants, right? And so uh, grants are meant to fund specific projects or programs. So they're not necessarily meant to fund a person, but again, it, it's meant for a specific project proposal. And normally government agencies or organizations offer grants. What typically will happen is faculty will apply for a grant and then they'll hire students uh, to help them with that, that funded project. And that's how we come up with graduate assistantships quite often. 
there are grants that students can apply for specifically for a proposed project or even for presentations at a conference for travel. Those are the types of grants you want to look for. So again, when you see that there's a grant opportunity available, you just need to be sure that you're eligible to apply as a student. And it's not something that the institution that University of Hawaii at Manoa has to apply for. Um, and then we would be responsible for awarding funds to you, um, or that it's not something that your faculty has to apply for, and then they would help fund you under that grant. Okay, so you need to check who is the eligible person who can apply. Okay, and then lastly on this slide, I have internships. So most people think internships are just for undergrads, but there are internships that available for um, graduate students through federal agencies, labs, in the industry. And these should not be overlooked. This is a great way to gain experience and help you to build your professional network. While the compensation might not be um, large amounts of money for an internship, really it's the professional development and the training, the exposure, the contacts that you make that really are the big compensation you're gaining from internships. And really for any of these type of opportunities, the big thing to be aware of is that please carefully review all the terms of the opportunity before you apply. Make sure you understand eligibility criteria, make sure you understand expectations, especially if there are restrictions or tax implications. For example, for some fellowships, if, you're, if you receive it, you cannot be awarded another fellowship or you can't receive duplicate funding, okay? Um, so these are things you have to be very cautious about and make sure, again, you're reading all the details. Okay, so what type of funding opportunities are available at UH Manoa? So we pretty much have everything that you, we went over on the terminology slide. Uh, again, with graduate assistantships, um, while there are a limited amount of GA ships available, it, it's not enough to fund all 3,000 plus graduate students here at our university. Um, there, you know, there are opportunities out there. And so if you're not approached by a faculty member or department to, um, to receive a GA ship, there are ways you can find them on our UH Manoa job site. And I'll show you how you can get to that link later on in our presentation. These are typically promoted through individual offices and departments who are hiring for those positions. Um, so be on the lookout when uh, those jobs are posted. They could hire throughout the year, uh, but typically it's around February or March that you'll see that units will, will be looking for graduate assistance for the next academic year. And then for scholarships, fellowships, and awards, again, each department or organization will have their own application process. They are, again, generally promoted through department newsletters. There's actually a weekly email that's sent out by the provost office to all students at our university. Um, so please be on the lookout for that email. While there's other things in that email, like events or important dates that are coming up, uh, there is a section on that weekly email that talks about different scholarships or fellowships or grant opportunities um, that are coming up. And then you can click the links for more information. And then graduate division, we also manage a number of scholarships and fellowships and awards. So we have fellowships and awards for dissertation research. We actually have a fellowship just for being a graduate student in good academic standing. Uh, we have a scholarship for community impact. And again, these are things that I'm going to show you where you can find information on. Um, but again, there, there's a number of these opportunities available through our university. And then for grants, uh, there's really two main grants that graduate students can apply for at UH Manoa. So one is through graduate student organization. They have small grants that you can apply for, for graduate research, professional development, conference presentations, et cetera. Um, we just received word that the grant applications, they are gonna they're going to accept grant applications for August. 
but that they are going to have applications on hiatus for the fall semester and they hope to resume application submissions in spring um, because they're working on creating greater funding equity for all graduate students. Um, but that is one of the grant opportunities you can apply for through UH Manila. Then the other one is through financial aid services. So I know when you hear financial aid, you're typically thinking loans, um, but there's something called the Manoa Opportunities Grant. So if you submit a FAFSA, if you're eligible to submit a FAFSA, okay, you will automatically be looked at by financial aid to see if you're eligible for the Manoa Opportunity Grant. Typically, they'll award anywhere from like two or $4,000 an academic year for the Manoa Opportunity Grant. And as funds become available, they'll continue to award students who submitted their FAFSA throughout the academic year. So if you are selected for the Manoa Opportunity Grant, you will see that as part of your financial aid package. If you have not submitted your FAFSA for the 2023-2024 academic year, you can still submit it. Um, and then again, if you are eligible for the Manoa Opportunities Grant, financial aid services will award funds to you. Um, sometimes funds, more funds become available in the spring semester. So if you aren't selected starting in the fall, don't get disheartened, maybe you'll be awarded in the spring. Okay. So now let's broaden this discussion of where do you look for funding um, in general. So not necessarily just with UH Manoa, but externally as well. Okay. So the first place I always recommend to students is to start with your academic department. So there's several reasons why I recommend this. One is your academic department will know what opportunities are available directly through their department for you to apply for and that you're eligible for. Two, they know of external discipline specific funding opportunities that are available to you, as well as some faculty might be interested in working with you on writing a proposal for a grant. Lastly, they know of students in the department who receive both prestigious and smaller awards. So they will be your best resource of putting you in touch with those students. If you want to do a broader search, we do have a graduate division. We have a website, uh, which is listed here at the bottom of the slide. And again, I'm, I'm going to show you that, that web page in a bit um, that will put you in touch with different types of resources to find funding. And then we talked earlier about email announcements and newsletters. So again, I mentioned that there's a weekly student email that goes out from the provost office. It's I think it's called like um, what's up at Manoa or what's up this week. So take a look for that email. And then different schools, colleges, departments, or even your individual academic program may have a newsletter. So if you can subscribe to that newsletter or ask your ask the program assistant, is there a newsletter that goes out for this department? Find out how to sign up for that. Um, if there are any listservs uh, for professional organizations uh, or agencies like National Science Foundation or NOAA uh, or NASA. Those are things you want to sign up for so that you, you can hear about different opportunities that come up. And then Graduate Division will also send out emails when there are different info sessions or special opportunities that we manage directly. Then there's financial aid services. So on their website, they do have a page where they'll list some scholarships and fellowships that are external, and they'll talk about the Manoa Opportunity Grant. They'll also talk about Manoa scholarships that they manage. And then for external databases, uh, we have a link to the graduate and postdoctoral extramural support database, which is managed through UCLA. Um, they and the Council for Graduate Studies were funded to put this database together. Um, and that's linked on our graduate division website. So I'll show you how to get to that. It's extremely comprehensive, but it's a little clunky um, to sift through because the filters don't always work as designed. But um, I find that if you subscribe to the different listings on that database, then that's helpful to get emails when different applications are open. 
And then my favorite tip actually uh, for where to find different funding opportunities is with current and former students. So if you know someone who received a prestigious award, award or you know has a fellowship, just do a search for them. Chances are their CV is posted publicly somewhere. And if they have a prestigious award, they probably have other awards or funding opportunities that they receive. So if you check their CV, you can learn about different opportunities that you might be interested in as well. And then you can reach out to them and ask them for advice or more information about that. Okay, so let me just go to the website quickly so I can show you. And then if someone from our graduate division team wouldn't mind just dropping the link for our uh, GD financial support page in the chat box, that would be great. So this is the financial support website that I talked about. So here we have achievement scholarships. Those are scholarships that each of your academic departments have available to graduate students and it's up to them how they uh, disperse those funds. There's the College of Social Sciences connector. So if you're looking for a graduate assistantship, you might wanna look here, even if you're not part of College of Social Sciences, as long as you have the skill sets of, um, that they are looking for, you, you might be a good match. Um, investigators will post uh, projects that they're looking for help on. Um, so you might be able to reach out to a faculty member individually, and then you can post your CV and information on the College of Social Sciences connector as well. Uh, then there's the East West Center Fellowships and Housing link. Uh, they will be at our resource fair on Friday. I recommend stopping by um, to talk to them. They offer funding, they have funding opportunities that can support you for your entire graduate degree. They also have a residential leadership opportunity, uh, which offers extremely affordable funding. I think the rate computes out to $18 a night for housing that's open to graduate students here just at UH Manoa. The fellowships and scholarships link will show you different external opportunities. Um, then we have links to the different Fulbright opportunities, which I manage. The graduate assistantships link, this is where you click on to get to the UH Manoa job site. So you can find out different GA ships that are being offered through um, UH Manoa. And then the STAR fellowships and scholarships, these are the ones that we manage directly through graduate division that you can learn about. There's a link to financial aid services. And then for those of you who are international students, uh, ISS has their own scholarships that they manage. So you might wanna check out their website as well. And then if you're part of, um, a, if you are a resident of a state um, that's part of WICHE, um, the Western region states, uh, you could be eligible for a tuition exchange program. So you would have needed to declare that before you submitted your application to graduate division. But if you do go on to another degree with us at UH Manoa, you can declare it at that time to be eligible for that. And then just really quickly, these are some notable funding opportunities uh, that students at UH Manoa have received. We work with a lot of these organizations directly. So if you would like more information, uh, you can contact me and I'd be happy to go over that with you. Uh, I'm actually the advisor for some of these uh, opportunities as well. And we can also put you in touch with the different students or departments uh, for students who have received these if you have more questions. So speaking of questions, I've done a lot of talking. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you what questions you might have at this time um, and what I can help to clarify. Thank you, Kristen, for providing an overview of funding options support at UH Manoa. Uh, so anyone, if you have a question for Kristen, please use the Q&A uh, button on your screen. So we actually do have a couple of uh, questions coming in. Yes. So the number one is, if we are to obtain a fellowship, can we still receive insurance through UH Manoa, or how would this work? Thank you. That's a good question. So some fellowships 
will provide you a small allocation that you can use towards purchasing your own health insurance. Depending on the fellowship, if they say that they have to be the sole or main source of funding for you, you may not be able to accept another significant award, such as a graduate assistantship. So you'll need to go back to whoever the funder is for that fellowship to determine if, you're, if you can um, accept other uh, awards or what other benefits you can have. Okay, we have another question here. Who would be our point of contact for federal internships? So for the federal internships, uh, typically you work directly with the agency on that. There are some fellowships such as NSF's graduate research fellowship program where I'm the coordinating official for that. So I would be the point of contact at UH Manoa for that. Uh, so it just really kind of depends. So like with the Nancy Foster, NOAA works with you directly um, with some of the NASA fellowships and with NOAA, those agencies work with you directly. Um, we don't work with you at UH Manoa. Um, same with like DOD SMART, um, DOD will work with you directly. Thank you, Kristen. So the third question is, can I apply for another, uh, for any other scholarship, fellowship, et cetera, even though I already have a GA ship? Yeah, so the good thing with scholarships is that they're normally stackable. Um, very rarely will a scholarship say that they have to be your sole source or primary source of funding. So if you have a graduate assistantship, you, you should be able to still apply for other scholarships. Fellowships is a different story. Um, depending on the fellowship, you may not be able to hold a graduate assistantship in addition to the fellowship. Um, and then most departments and in general our practice at UH Manoa is if you have, for example, a significant fellowship like NSFGRFP um, or um, a DOD SMART, you cannot hold another, like a second GA ship or another GA ship here at UH Manoa. Thank you. So the next question is, what are funding options for graduate certificate programs or a PBU students? <laughs> yeah, I get that question all the time. So I, unfortunately, I don't have the best news for that. Um, there are not really a lot of formal funding opportunities for that. Your best chance for a certificate or PBU would be to look at professional associations. So you'd have to be a member at a professional association and they will sometimes provide like a grant or funding for that. For example, I know AAUW offers um, like a $4,000 grant to women for professional development. So if you're going for a certificate or if you're a PBU student, they, you might be able to use that, that funding for it. Um, that's pretty much your best option, but all the scholarships and fellows, fellowships we offer through UH Manoa, unfortunately are not available for certificate or PBU students. Thank you, <laughs> Kristen. We get sorry. more- I'm Sorry, I'm <laughs> sorry. And we get um, more questions for the GA ships. So how is tuition paid if I receive a GA ship for 2023 to 2024? My GA ship covers tuition for the year. Oh, great. Yeah, great question. So at UH Manoa, if you are a 0.5 FTE GA, which means that you're working 20 hours a week, then you would fill out a tuition waiver form. Your department or supervisor should have had you fill out the graduate assistant tuition waiver form, and then your entire tuition gets waived. You're still responsible for pay paying your $451 of student fees, um, but your tuition gets waived. If you have an appointment less than 0.5 FTE, you you are, um, you are not necessarily eligible for tuition revision. Okay. And I think we have time for maybe just one more question. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. It's also a GA question. So okay. for the GA internships, I heard there is a code to look for to be the tuition waiver. Do you happen to know the code or how to identify if there is, if the GA has a tuition funding? I think, okay, so as far as coding, again, co the coding is an administrative thing on our side that we take care of through graduate division. Um, but if you filled out the gay text, the GA tuition 
exemption form, uh, then you would get a confirmation when it's been processed. And then normally within a few days, it goes live on your account so that you should see the tuition reverse on your student account. Um, if you didn't, if you're not seeing that and you're a GA, um, it likely means you have not filled out a GA tuition waiver form and you should go back to your GA supervisor to ask about the GA tuition waiver form. Thank you, Krista. Sure, no problem. Okay, so um, let's move on to talk about the application timeline and don't worry, we do have more time for questions and answers later. Um, so, the main thing I want you to take away when it comes to preparing for applications is that you need to start way in advance. Most application deadlines are a minimum of six to 12 months prior to when you would actually receive the funds. So for example, we're gonna start the 2023-2024 school year. If you haven't applied for something before and already been awarded, it's highly unlikely at this point that there are going to be any opportunities available there. I mean, there's a few that are still left right now, um, but most of them you needed to apply a year ago. OK, so right now, this is when you're going to start applying for the 2024 2025 school year. You're going to start applying for next school year. OK, um, so when you see the announcement about an opportunity, uh, sometimes the announcement comes before the application opens or sometimes it's simultaneous, but when you see the announcement, just get started immediately, okay? You might think, oh, I have time. I have three months to work on my application and my essays, no problem. I'll work on it next week. Well, before you know it, those three months have passed and the, the deadline approaches. So you want to get started right away, make a checklist, um, you know, schedule things on your calendar for when you're going to have them done. Start working on those essays right away. Those take the longest um, when it comes to applications. Uh, just don't don't delay. OK, get started. Um, and then as you inch closer to the application deadline while the application is open, that's when you should have already started identifying who you want to have or recommend, recommendation letter writers, um, language evaluators, et cetera, and start reaching out to them. Just let them know, say, hey, I, you know, I'm interested in applying for Fulbright and uh, you know, this is what I was thinking of doing for my proposal. I would really, really be appreciative if you would mind being one of my recommenders. I feel like, you know, you know me best and you understand my project and I would really value your support on this and see what they say. And you want to reach out to them at least a month before uh, the recommendations are due. And also, while the application is open, you want to be getting feedback on your essays. If you're submitting your first draft of your statement or proposal or essays as your application, chances are it will not be reviewed well. You should be going through a number of iterations on your proposals and essays before you submit the final version of that. You wanna get feedback from your faculty advisor, peers who are in your discipline and especially outside of your discipline. It's okay to even get feedback from family members. That, that's fine because essentially reviewers are going to be from outside your discipline, or even if they are in your field, they're not going to be familiar with your research topic. So you need to be writing to a general intelligible audience. And that's why it's important to get feedback on your essays and feedback from people who are not necessarily familiar with your project or who are outside of your discipline. Okay, so work on refining your essay and using the feedback that you get. Definitely, when the deadline is approaching, don't submit on the deadline, submit early, um, at least a week or two in advance. Uh, some online systems uh, get really bogged down as the, app, as the deadline approaches, and you might find it hard to submit everything or upload things, and then you're going to be in trouble. And once that deadline passes, the funder is not going to make an exception. Okay, that's actually the first way they weed out applicants is if you didn't submit by the deadline, that's it. Because to them, again, they're funding you to execute what you propose, what you propose, and to meet your deadlines. So deadlines are really important to them. Um, some online systems have a limit. So if you apply too late, 
you're out of luck. They're not accepting any more applications. Um, so you want to definitely submit early. Um, and then go down your checklist. Did you make sure every component was completed? Did you meet all the formatting guidelines? Did you uh, fulfill every criteria? Um, you know, make sure everything is checked off. Because again, if you don't meet all the details um, that's being asked for in the application, you might not meet the minimum technical requirements and not be considered. Okay. Uh, then some application processes, the recommendation letters are due after you submit your part of your application. So if that is true, um, or even if the recommendations are due at the same time, always follow up with your recommenders. Um, at least two weeks before the deadline, reach out, remind them that it's due, right? Um, if you're not hearing back from them as the deadline approaches, make sure you had a backup. Right, um, that's your time to start reaching out to your backup. Um, and even though that could be an awkward conversation with someone, uh, you know, because they weren't your first choice, just say, "Hey, you know, I'm so sorry I didn't reach out to you earlier. Uh, you know, I'm really interested in applying for this opportunity, and I, I would love if you could, uh, you know." do a recommendation for me. I, I realize I, I need another recommendation. Uh, would you be able to support me on this? Okay. Um, and that's why I say reach out and follow up with your recommenders at least two weeks in advance so that if you have to use your backup, you still have some wiggle room and, and leeway on that. And then once everything's completed and the recommenders submit, send a thank you note to them because you're building this relationship, you're maintaining a relationship with them, right? You may need to use them as a recommender again in the future. And so you don't want to just completely ignore them or not show gratitude for the time and effort that they put in to support you on, on your application, right? Um, and when you hear back, whether it's good news or, or you didn't get funded, let them know, right? They're interested. They invested time in you. So, you know, again, just say thank you again for writing. Unfortunately, I wasn't selected, but I'm going to try for more awards and, and I'd love for your continued support on that. Okay. So I kind of talked about some of these tips and advice already, um, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll kind of go over these quickly, uh, which is there are a lot of opportunities out there. Uh, you just have to look for them, right? Again, sign up for those newsletters, check those emails, right? Um, look on the websites, um, you know, that, that you know you, you want to apply for, for when those applications become available, right? And then apply for everything that's feasible. Um, it might seem overwhelming uh, to apply for like 10 or 15 in the year, and, and that's fine. But you know what? You apply for one, and the the groundwork's already set for your next application. You just have to tweak things and edit or uh, you know, maybe expand on your essays for the next one or shrink it down for the next one. Um, so it becomes easier to apply for more opportunities once you've submitted one. As we talked about in the timeline, start early, make a plan, have checklists, right? Put it on your calendar, right? Don't lose sight of those deadlines. Pay attention to the application details. Um, just again, those little minor things like the text, the font that, that is allowed, um, the size of the text, the margins that you have to use, those are really important, right? Um, they're either put there because if you don't follow them, things might not actually fit on the reviewer side when they're looking at it, um, or they use that as their technical review. And if you don't meet it, you're automatically cut, right? Um, so again, pay attention to the details. If there's an information session, attend it. Please attend it. Um, that is your best shot to ask questions, to get detailed information. Oftentimes, they will have um, current recipients uh, in those information sessions giving inside tips on the application process and sharing about their experience. Um, so I find those are really valuable. If you can't attend the information sessions real time, if it's virtual and being recorded, just register so that you can get the recording and go back and watch it. Talk to previous recipients. They are a wonderful resource. Um, sometimes they're even willing to share their essays with you. 
Now, do not copy their essays. Okay, that's definitely a no-no <laughs> for, for several reasons, right? Um, but sometimes they're happy to share so that you have an example, a model to work off of, and just kind of help you to generate ideas of how you want to put yours together, or it might trigger you know, new ideas for you as you read through someone's essay. Again, get feedback on your applications. Very important um, to get that from people within your discipline as well as outside of your discipline. Um, and again, part of that is because you need to speak to a general intelligible audience. Okay. So um, one of the things that I, I recommend is, you know, have like, you know, your aunt or your parent, someone who isn't familiar uh, with your field um, or your research project, and if they can actually understand the basic language that you have in your essay, then you're in good shape, okay? Um, and then again, have backups for references. Okay, so before we go into our breakout activity, I'd love to field some more questions um, from you. Thank you, Kristen. Those are very great tips and advice. And it's good to know that you really have to plan well in advance for most applications. Um, we don't want you to wait until the last minute for sure. So we definitely have more questions in the Q&A. And the first one is, if I would like to turn my CV and resume tone up, and is there anyone who can help me on campus? Oh, yes, there is. Oh, gosh, you know what? I should have had this website um, ready. So at UH Manoa, we have a writing center, uh, which is under the English department. They are amazing. Um, do not be fooled. Okay, just because they are under the English department, they are open to all disciplines. Um, they, I mean, they have worked with students um, from STEM fields, they actually, um, the writing director actually um, runs a course on writing for um, students in STEM. Uh, so they, they've helped with manuscripts, CVs, uh, essays, um, grant proposals, uh, everything. So you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with them. It's free. Oh, thank you very much for posting that in the chat box. The website is in the chat box. Um, they normally open in September. Uh, they're closed during the breaks. Uh, they are not open during the summer. But I always recommend to students to go and book uh, a free consultation. With the writing center. Thank you, Kristen. So another question is about we the, we covered some funding opportunities for the G Cert students, and a student asked, "What about financial aid for certificate programs?" No, yeah, financial aid is only eligible for masters and doctoral level degree seeking students. Thank you. So our next question is, when do we start getting paid for GA ship? Okay, so um, assuming that you are not an employee at UH Manoa um, or in the UH system, typically how it works is whatever your start date is. Generally, most GAs start August 1st as your start date. Uh, whenever your start date is, there's a, there's a lag in the payroll system. So you will not see your first paycheck until September. Um, and then um, there is a payroll schedule that your human resources representative can share with you, so you can see which dates you'll be you'll be receiving the payroll. Uh, I always recommend to students um, to sign up for direct deposit right away. Um, you're actually required to, as a state employee, to sign up for direct deposit, um, but do not delay on doing that um, because that's the fastest way for you to get your paycheck. Thank you, Kristen. And I am going to combine the last, uh, the next three uh, questions because it's all about GA. Yeah. Well, for a GA ship, is it possible to renew the contract or to renew the work as a GA for next year? Do yeah. all GA positions come with a full tuition waiver? And so, and, and one student said that he was told and, and need to work for a full year as a GA to get the tuition wa waiver. Is that true? Oh. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, okay, let me let me start with the first question. Uh, so, it is up to your the department who is hiring you and your hiring supervisor the length of your GA ship and if they will renew your GA ship beyond your initial offering period. 
okay? So some GA ships may only be for one semester. Some, they intend for you to be a GA for the entire year, but they start you off with just the first semester. Um, others, they'll just straight out tell you, I'm gonna fund you as a GA for two years. You're, you're set for the first two years. You're gonna work on this project with me for, for two years, okay? So again, it, that's between your department and the hiring supervisor, okay? Um, for the tuition waiver question, uh, again, if you are a 0.5 FTE, again, working 20 hours a week, GA, then you should have filled out the graduate assistant tuition exemption form. Uh, mm -hmm. which is on our graduate division website. Maybe someone um, can drop the link for the form site. You, you really should be going through your program and your hiring supervisor for that. If they didn't tell you to fill that out or they did not fill it out for you, um, then again, that's a conversation that you, you should be having with them. But as long as you fill that out, the tuition waiver is immediate. So it's not something you wait a year for. Um, you have to be a GA for fall and spring to get the tuition waiver for summer or a GA for spring and the following fall to get the tuition waiver for summer, but that's not true for fall and spring. Okay, so the last question I have here is how does the STEP system work? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so if you go to our graduate division website and you look under graduate assistance, uh, we have different step levels uh, depending on nine month and 11 month appointments. So that would have been stated in your offer letter if you're a nine month GA or if you're an 11 month GA. And they should have also indicated the step. So minimum step level to begin with for all GAs starting this academic year is step 12. Okay, that's the minimum level of payment. But again, depending on your hiring department and the funds that they have available to them, the step level could vary. So some departments have more money, so they might be able to offer you starting at a higher step level, and others can only have you start at step 12. Thank you. Do we have more time for the questions? Yeah, yeah, we have time for one or two more questions. Okay. Yep. And then we'll do our breakout. Our okay. breakout activity. Yeah. So the next one is I am applying for a GA position now and has not gotten a response yet. Should I register for courses now and later get waived? Uh, so you should definitely be registering for fall. Um, all, all students should be registering for fall if you haven't registered yet. I do do know that some programs will have their own academic program orientation um, for their students and that they'll go over the courses at that time when you're registering. So if, if you're one of those, of, of course, wait. Otherwise, registration opened um, months ago and, and you can register for your fall classes. Uh, if you're waiting to hear if you're going to be offered a graduate assistantship, depending on when you apply, you can always follow up with the hiring supervisor who's listed on that job posting just to say, you know, like, uh, you know, I submitted my application. Uh, I was wondering if you, uh, if there were any questions I could help answer in regards to the information that sub I submitted. Very happy to speak with you. Um, and just kind of put yourself out there to see what they say. The school year is starting soon, so everyone is really busy. Um, even if you applied a couple of weeks ago or, or a month ago, um, they might be busy gearing up for the start of the fall semester and, and maybe they'll get in touch with you a little later this month. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah. Our last question would be, how many hours do you have to work for GA? Um, so again, that will be specified in your offer letter, depending on the type of appointment that you have, but a 0.5 FTE GA ship is expected to work 20 hours a week. Thank you. That's, uh, we actually have one more question. Do we have time? Yep, sure. And then we'll take this last question and then we're going to go okay. into the breakout activity. So this person has a question. If doing a GA during the spring and fall contract says 11 months, is it necessary to continue the GA during the summer? Um, so again, it, it depends on the specific job that you're hired for. There are some GA ships that because of the work requirements, you do report to work um, for 11 months of the year. So for example, in graduate division, um, our GA, she worked 
like all all year round and then she would just let us know when she you know was going to be off duty and so we budgeted that into her one month of off duty period um, so that's a discussion you need to have with your department on what your work schedule looks like including which months um, throughout the year that you'll be working thank you very much Kristen yeah sure no problem um, okay, so I would like to um, invite you to please join uh, the breakout session. Uh, and so just really, really casually, um, no more than three people per room, just introduce yourselves, um, share what funding opportunities you know about or plan to apply for, uh, and how did you learn about these opportunities or who's helping you? With these opportunities. Uh, honestly, um, the connections that you're going to make here, I hope you will find will be valuable to you, um, not just with the information that will be shared, uh, but that, you know, you'll have a, a starting um, ground to, you know, have connections before graduate school begins. And who knows, maybe you'll you'll hit it off and you'll decide to meet each other at the resource fair on Friday. <laughs> um, but hopefully one of the things that you've heard through some of our sessions that it's important to build a peer network of support. And so maybe the connections that you make here today will end up being that support for you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed connecting with new colleagues. And before you leave for today, I would like to say thank you to Kristen Connors for presenting this afternoon and mahalo to all for your for joining us. Thank you. And this concludes our session today. Mahalo.